What's up, everybody? Good morning. I know it's a good amount earlier than I usually upload, but I thought I'd go ahead and get this out as early as possible. We did get some Seahawks news uh, yesterday. I didn't have the opportunity to post any videos about it then, but uh, let's go ahead and take a look at things now, where they stand. Uh, we have some information, and we have some information that can be inferred from the first wave of actual information as well. So let's uh, go through this. Brady Henderson has a tweet here summing it up pretty good. Evan Brown is questionable. We already knew that for the game today against Arizona. So in order to mitigate risk, the Seahawks have signed Joey Hunt off their practice squad and to make room for him have waived Ben Brown. So that's a pretty interesting set of moves. They, they obviously feel so concerned about Evan Brown's health that they're getting a center off their practice squad who has a very negative reputation for, I think, all Seahawks fans. Like, Joey Hunt is not a guy that Seahawks fans remember fondly at all, so it's kind of interesting he would be the fallback. Um, I'd say he has familiarity in this offense, but he really doesn't even have that. He played in 2019 for like half the season and that was the Schottenheimer offense so even on that level it's really not an advantageous to him and I, I guess he's been part of this practice squad so he's got some familiar with the offense there but it's as a practice squad player so that's a little bit interesting it does indicate that Evan Brown has a very good chance of not playing in this game they think it's at least a distinct possibility and they want to protect themselves if Evan Brown does play and then within a few plays goes, okay, I can't do this. Kind of like Jalen McMillan did for the Huskies last week. So that tells you that Evan Brown's injury is not trivial. We also waived Ben Brown, who was our backup left guard, meaning we don't really have a backup left guard, do we? Because when you think about it, our backup now would be to bump Evan Brown over and play Oluwatimi at center. But Evan Brown there are indications that he's not going to be able to play. So you, you do the math, and first of all, that tells you that the team is extremely confident that Damian Lewis is going to be able to play in this game. But even if you're confident about Damian Lewis, who's the backup left guard? Is it Phil Haynes, who also might not play in this game as far as we know right now? Is it Anthony Bradford playing out of position? Like, you see what I'm getting at? This is weird. I understand that maybe they feel like backup center is more pressing than backup left guard, but I'm serious. If Damian Lewis gets hurt, I don't know what we do. We're probably going to end up playing Stone Forsythe at left guard or Jake Curhan at left guard, and then we play Raekwon O'Neal at right. Like, I, I can't figure this one out because before anybody asks, we haven't promoted Jason Peters. So this could get ugly really quickly if our offensive linemen do not remain upright today. We desperately need the offensive linemen that we have in this game, whoever it may be, to stay upright because I genuinely don't know what we do if there are injuries. Well, if there are injuries to certain players, then I know. If Cross gets hurt, Forsyth takes his place. If um, Evan Brown can't go, then Oluwatimi takes his place. And if Oluwatimi can't go, then Joey Hunt plays. And et cetera, et cetera. But... Really, what happens if Damian Lewis gets hurt in this game? I know that he was completely cleared this week, but man, th this is, uh, we are living on the edge here. So interesting set of moves there. Also, we got our practice squad promotions. Like I said, no Jason Peters, so he's not eligible to play this week. We got wide receiver Aesop Winston and running back Sir Roderick Thompson. So a couple different ways to interpret that. Aesop Winston could be related to DK Metcalf, right? We could feel like DK Metcalf isn't going to play. We know he's a game-time decision and it's going to be close. So we want Aesop Winston. So Roderick Thompson is simpler, right? Charbonnet is questionable. Therefore, we need another running back. So Roderick Thompson's the next man up. So the fact that we're calling those guys up is pretty strongly indicative of the fact that we think it's a Decent chance Metcalf and Charbonnet don't play. So that's not great. However, some people have pointed out that Aesop Winston could be getting this call 
because of Charbonnet as well. Because we're going to need somebody to return kicks and punts. If DJ Dallas has to be our backup running back, we might not want him to do that. So therefore, Aesop Winston does it. Possible as well. It could be for both, or it could be for just one of them. But if Charbonnet can't play, then we're going to lean on DJ Dallas more, and that means you can't put DJ Dallas in harm's way like you normally would. So that's just the trying to interpret these uh, promotions and elevations. Um, in terms of what we lose if we don't have these guys, because I expected, when I made the video a couple days ago, I said I expect to have Evan Brown and DK Metcalf. And not having those two guys, that's... Uh, that starts to make things just a little bit hairy, right? I don't want to act like I think we're going to lose a game now because we're missing a couple guys, but Evan Brown's done a great job holding things together in the middle. He's played well so far this year. He's a capable run blocker and a good pass protector. He's doing a good job making pre-snap calls as well and keeping the line on one page. Um, I think that he's been the best center we've had since... We traded um, Max Unger, and I know that's not a high bar to clear, but and, and I also know that it's early, but uh, not having Evan Brown out there I think would be significant because you're looking at putting a rookie out there, and if the rookie gets hurt, then you've got Joey Hunt, which I don't think I need to tell you guys what's going on, with what would go on with Joey Hunt. That would be very, very aggravating to most of us. <laughs> Just to look at him, even if Joey Hunt went out there and played okay, I think a lot of Seahawks fans would get stressed out just by having to look at him. Um, and DK Metcalf, look, I know that there are a lot of people who aren't happy with DK Metcalf right now. I even got some comments from people saying, hey, I want to see this offense with no DK. I want to see if we can go without DK. I want to see if maybe we can get through without DK because I'm sick of this and I'm sick of that. Guys, very few receivers in the NFL are better at drawing double teams than DK Metcalf. A lot of the stuff that works in this offense works because Metcalf is drawing so much of the defense's attention. His combination of size, strength, and speed is very rare in this league. I know he's not as good as other receivers in this, in this league, don't get me wrong, but his skill set is so hard to deal with as a defense. I, I really am not eager to see what this offense looks like without him. I, I know we have other good pass catchers, but DK Metcalf, I think, without putting up the big numbers is consistently a big part of the reason why our offense does what it does, because he's pulling the safety over and over and over again. And the moment he stops pulling the safety, we can start hitting big plays. There's a reason why we don't hit a lot of big plays to Metcalf anymore. It's because the safety is almost always over the top. And Charbonnet, I mean, that one's pretty obvious, right? He's uh, been playing pretty effectively as a backup running back. It's not the end of the world if we don't have him. I mean, we, we've proven that we're more than happy to give a huge workload to K-9, and he can take it, but uh, obviously you'd rather have balance. And this injury may very well explain why Charbonnet barely played against the Bengals. It was probably something brewing the week before. All right, so um, we're going to get an inactives list at some point, and we'll probably take a look at it when it happens, and I'm worried we're going to get some bad news about a couple of these guys. It would be pretty shocking if all of these guys were able to play with the uh, practice squad elevations and signings that we made in the last um, 24 hours or so to try to mitigate potentially not having them. See you guys later. Go Hawks. We'll uh, see what's up a little later.